Hello, Alan. Nice to see you. We're kind of matching colour-wise today. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, yeah, I see the purple on the... Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, yours is cute too. Yeah, well, I oh, know it's short sleeve. Yeah, yeah, I supposedly I look good in purple. I've never sort of... I'm not a very good judge of, like, colours. You know how people... Some people go, oh, yes, I've always been an autumn. <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah, I always just, I think of autumn as sort of muddy puddles and ground in leaves on footpaths. Mm, um, soggy leaves. Yeah, I don't think soggy leaves is a colour. It's probably a lipstick colour because they're named like, you know, for everything. I remember when I was a kid that, that yeah, that was a thing. Like you get a colour chart before you learn how to do your makeup and it was summer, winter autumn and spring I remember that now and that would tell you the colors of eyeshadow you needed given we did our beauty um our beauty blog last week lips and assholes I thought you might be interested in that yeah, <laughs> you knew about it summer winter yeah, yeah. oh look I'm, I'm all over like about five things but I'm yeah. all over those five things I love it I love yeah. it what's going on what's going on in your world oh look we're just um we're just still all at home and mm. doing some home schooling, and I, I'm, I'm not. I didn't do very well at school, Miff. I find um, that hard to believe because you're so smart. Well, see, this is thank you. That's a lovely thing to say. I'm not very. Mm, uh, look, I got expelled from kindergarten. <laughs> what for? <laughs> well, no one's, no one's quite sure. But can you even get the, expelled from kindergarten? My daughter's just saying, can you even get expelled from kindergarten? Probably not now, but in 1972, uh, no, no, 1971 mm. or 1970, you could certainly get expelled. Look, I either helped kids do all their work because I finished mine quickly. Yeah. Or blew up the incinerator. <laughs> Uh, blew up the incinerator. Yeah. Remember that? We used to just go and burn stuff. Now we need Look to remember it. go burn it. Yeah. Look, for younger people, people our age are already laughing and thinking about incinerators. Myth, for younger folk, if they are indeed watching, mm. could you explain the idea? I'm watching. Okay, you're watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're watching from a different angle. <laughs> could you explain the idea of the incinerator? I'm Hi Daisy. The incinerator was at the back of the school, often up the back, sort of at, at the ugly fence where no one ever went, no one hung out there, and it was in its own, it was in its own fence, it's fenced off, so kids couldn't get in there. But it was never locked, and there was an actual incinerator where you would go and put the rubbish for that day into the incinerator and burn it, mm. which just yeah. seems. Absolutely ludicrous, and also getting kids to chuck stuff in the incinerator. <laughs> Imagine that. Now, and we need to be very, we need to make people aware of the fact that when we talk about rubbish, we're talking about everything. Plastics, everything, all in the incinerator. Chuck it in, give it a light a match. Was it lit by a match or was it an electric thing? Well, I don't know, but ours you lit from below. So, so it's, it's square. And then down the bottom, there's a little flue hole. So that allows the air to circulate. Yeah. And you stuff that with newspaper. Mm. You've got all that. You put the newspaper in, then you put all the stuff on top. Then you light that. And if you're impatient, you pour kerosene on it. Um, but you light that. Keep it alive with yeah. all those chemicals and burning plastics. And no. Just looking at it as well. I loved looking at it. So I'd be over, like, I'd be looking over the incinerator while we were burning plastic things and like hair, if we'd had a haircut or I don't know, everything, everything you can imagine. Everything. So, so did you have an incinerator at your house? Yeah, we had an incinerator at our house and an incinerator at school. But the, you know, the interesting thing, it only just occurred to me, the only thing we wouldn't burn is vegetable scraps because they went in the compost. Well, that's good. At least they were, you were thinking about the environment in that department. <laughs> so it was, it was a weird dichotomy in our house. Um, right, right next to the incinerator were two huge compost bins. So we're going to go out the sandbox 
It's weird, isn't it? But is it because we didn't understand at that time the implications of burning those kind of things had on the environment? Yeah, I think very much so. I mean, yeah. it, we're also talking about a time when everyone smoked, no mm. one wore seatbelts, and driving home drunk was just driving home. That's true. Oh, different times, Alan, different, different times. times. So, <laughs> at, at my school, um, the majority of things went in the incinerator on a Friday. Oh. And so, um, I don't know, maybe they didn't have a lot of matches. Um, and if you had been good all week, you got to put the stuff in the incinerator. Oh, my God. You get to, you get to make fire out of toxic chemicals burning. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Think of all the science experiments that would end up in the incinerator. Do you remember that? They used to make us cut up animals and stuff. Do they? Surely they don't do that anymore. Cutting up animals? Yeah, they'd give us a frog or something and we'd have to cut it up in biology oh. and to look at its innards and stuff. And I think about that now and go, that is just grim. Mm. Oh, do I really need to do this? Ugh. Ugh. I remember there was a guy at high school. I wish I could remember his name. I think it was Brett, but I can't remember. <laughs> Good in, name. In, in Mrs. McDonald's biology class, yeah. um, in her lab, there was an incubator. And it hardly ever got used. And then one term, she decided that we were going to incubate eggs to watch some sort of life cycle. Mm. She opened up the incubator and this guy, Brett, had been growing marijuana. In <gasps> Good on you, Brett. <laughs> and, the, and this is a funny thing. Mrs. McDonald was a biology teacher, but she didn't recognise what it was. I suppose she wasn't a zoologist. Well, that's true. That's true. But surely everybody knows what that is when they see it. But these days, Brett would be considered to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> thoughts. I mean, you know, in those days, that's a bad thing. That was a bad thing, growing pot in the incubator. But now these days, well, so I reckon Brett did all right in life. What do you yeah, well, that's the thing. He's probably got a space program now. <laughs> He's probably sending pot to the moon. <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh. Did you, how did, what were you like at school? Was I like at school? I don't know. I don't remember kinder um, very well, although I do remember saying, being asked at kinder, I loved it. I loved school. I couldn't wait to go. I had three older brothers and because they were gone, I just couldn't, it was unbearable that I wasn't going to school as well and being stuck home for that extra year. And um, cause there's only a year difference between me and my, my closest brother, Kit. And, um, I remember kinder and they asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up. And I do remember saying I wanted to be either a fish or a fire truck, not a fireman, a fire truck. <laughs> I don't quite understand why or how, but I, that's like one of my clear vivid memories. I just wanted to be a fish. Just I wanted do. To be I dream fish. about fish all the time. Do you? What does that mean? I dream about whales all the time and underwater swimming like it's um, Atlantis in a world, like this amazing world. It's great. Fabulous dreams. Fabulous. When I was 12, 11 or 12, I became obsessed with, uh, I first started reading Chariot of the Gods by Eric von Daniken. And he's the guy that said he reckoned aliens came to Earth and helped build things like the pyramids. Um, because he obviously had a very low opinion of Egyptians. Um, <laughs> and so I, so it was about Atlantis and I started reading about Atlantis and I remember distinctly getting in trouble for trying to, on our atlas, that, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of money, and, but we had this atlas, we had books, and I drew on this atlas, I got in so much trouble, but I was triangulating various points to find out where Atlantis might be. I became absolutely obsessed. I reckon I was maybe 10 or 11, and I was oh always God. trying to work out where Atlantis was. Oh, did you, do you think you found it, though? Do you think you hit the nail on the head, so to speak, on the... No. no I don't know. If I was a James Cameron-esque sort of person, I would have built some sort of one-man submarine and spent my entire life trying to find Atlantis. And all yeah. I and I wouldn't have found it, and all I would have just ended up with was sores on my bottom for sitting in the submarine for so long, and an enormous beard and no mates, and a really sore head. Cause yeah, of the yeah. Oh yeah, from all the pressure. Yeah, just just absolutely mad, and then eventually I just disappear, and 
one day they uncover me in my submarine. And But th then you would find it, that would have been your last trip and you'd find Atlantis on your final trip, but then the submarine, something mechanical failure. This, there's a movie in this. Yes. 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 Alan's Atlantis. <laughs> Alan so Alantis, 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 Alantis Morissette. <laughs> That's what happens when she falls off the Canadian continent and it sinks to the bottom <laughs> of the sea. And no one can find her. Um, what are we talking about uh, kindergarten? Is it because you said you're no good at homeschooling because you said you got kicked out at kindergarten? <laughs> yeah. I, what makes you think you're no good? Oh, look, I'm not. I'm not very patient. I don't, because I didn't listen at school very well, I don't understand some of the basic concepts of things like creating an a informative paragraph mm. um, and that sort of thing. So it's just, yeah, because I didn't listen, I missed out on all these important things like my spelling is atrocious, my grammar is atrocious, um, you know, I'm a published author. Thank God for editors. Editors, I know. Yeah, they, and so that's one of the things. And it's just, it's, it's like getting driving lessons from a parent. They're just too close. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, like I, the only time I ever heard my father use the F word mm -hmm. was on the one and only driving lesson that we oh, had. <laughs> when we'd driven down the road and he said, now put it in reverse and go backwards. Now, I'd only, I'd only driven down the road and he was deciding that I should put it in reverse and I backed into a power pole. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? So I didn't intend to. <laughs> I'd only driven at that point about 1,500 metres in my entire life. Oh, um, you would have felt so bad. Well, I don't drive, as you know. I, yeah. don't, drive. I don't have a driver's licence. I've never had one. Never had a car. No. Um, I've driven a couple of times, but that was only in the country when the person who was meant to be driving us home was so drunk that they couldn't. Oh, um, you the car, my goodness. How was yeah, it? Yeah. Enjoy it? I, I was sober and I took a whole bunch of people home on the back of a ute. <laughs> That's very yeah. country. Oh, the only time I heard my dad swear, he say the F word to me at least, probably said it a million times when I wasn't around, was when we used to have to pick rock melons after... Um, after high school, uh, Kit, Kit, my brother and I, and mum and dad, in 40 degree heat, um, you have to go and pick rock melons after school. Oh. And we all hated it because it was hot up in where we were. And rock melons are down on the ground, it's dirty and they're sticky. And um, I, can't, I can't come out calling them cantaloupes because that's just a posh name for, for rock melons. Um, and I remember I, we'd take turns driving the tractor through to pick up the, the rockies. And um, I remember I was driving the tractor. It was one of those with the tractor seats, you know, those metal tractor seats. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Like, they're like almost kidney-shaped. Is that yeah. old? That's how old the tractor was. I remember that. And I remember Dad going, turn it that way. I mean, what way is that? What way is that? I was like, which way do I turn it? So I turned it the wrong way. And, of course, you know, end of the, end of the day, everyone's grumpy. And, oh, fuck. I remember that. And, just going, and I was like... He told me to turn it that way. <laughs> and then it was on. It was on for young and old. So between that and my brother Kit throwing rotten rock melons on my back while I was hunched over picking the rock melon, it was, it was not a fun time. Not a fun time to be a teenager at the Warhurst house in summer when there was fruit to be picked. Whose rock melons were they? Ours. Oh, we had a pack. We had it, yeah, we had, because um, we grew up on a property, so some of it was, was vines um, and the rock melons was on the, on the front of it. So, yeah, it was awful. It was awful. My child. I, we had, I had one experience similar to that, which was my dad and a friend of his, the friend was a farmer and he had like half an acre that he wasn't, that he decided what him and dad would do is plant it in potatoes. Oh. And half an acre of potatoes, like it, it, think about, think about twice the, the, the area of what a nor like an average house is on mm. in suburban Australia, and then double it. Yep. And that's how many potatoes we had, and 
I remember mum saying, so who's going to do all this? Well, we are. It's going to be, a, it's going to be lovely. We'll go out on a Saturday and we'll plant them and then we'll, you know, we'll, then we'll bring them in, we'll harvest them. Well, it was just a nightmare. Nightmare, yeah. It was like a, a gulag in the middle of New Zealand. And when we were, we were harvesting them, and there's thousands of potatoes. And yeah. I've got a pitchfork, and mum says it's lunchtime, and I put the pitchfork into the ground. But I, it didn't, it wasn't just the ground that it went through. Oh. I put the pitchfork, one of the, the tines of the pitchfork, I presume they're called that, um, oh. through my big toe. And, <laughs> and then, oh. Because I needed to get to lunch, I pulled it out. I, I mean, obviously, I felt that I had pierced the entire width of my big toe. And I pulled it out, and when I took my gumboot off, it was filled with blood. Oh. Yeah, and I pulled it out. And A rusty pitchfork you put in your... Oh, yeah. So not only did I not get any lunch, but I had to go to the hospital and get a tetanus injection. Did you have to pick potatoes ever again? Can't remember, you know. I think... <laughs> I think I probably had to put them in sacks. I probably wasn't allowed out onto the ground again with any sort of sharp implement. Yeah. Probably given a wooden spoon and told to put them in sacks. Oh. Yeah. It bloody oh, hurt. Thing. You poor little thing. Yeah. How old were you? Do you remember mm. when you nearly lost your big toe? Oh, no, no. I do, it, it's still there. Yeah. Um, but, no, I just sort of put the fork right through it. Um, maybe I was... 10 or 11. It's a time of great misadventure for many boys because, you know, puberty setting in and you don't know, you, you genuinely don't know your ass from your elbow. No. And you're all over the shop and then you're shoving pitchforks in your toe. Why did you put a pitchfork in? My daughter's just asked me why I put a pitchfork in my toe. By oh, accident. Not on purpose, Daisy. Not on purpose. Oh, she said, oh, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> Oh, so it's going well then. Oh, you don't believe that I did it on it by accident? Yeah. Okay. I don't know exactly what she, sort of person she thinks I am if I'm purposely piercing my toe with a big <laughs> pitchfork. I don't think you are. I can't imagine you would do that. But then teenage boys, they don't think through those things. I don't roll that way, Miff. I'm not, I'm, I'm not big into the being pierced with things. No, no, me neither. Not, Just, I'm not really into any kind of piercing of the skin. <laughs> yeah, I just the earrings. Ear. Yeah, yeah. I, I got the earrings, but that's, that's it. Yeah. Oh, I got my belly button pierced, but it was on a television show in New Zealand. <laughs> we were talking about it, and it was, it was live, but, it, yeah, it was, I think it was live, and we were talking, and I said, I've always wanted to get my navel pierced. And the guy said, well, I know a guy. If I call him, will you have it done live on television? And I said, yeah, okay, do I have to pay for it? He said, no, 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 we'll pay for it. I went, too right. Oh, my God. And so I got it pierced live on television. Did you pass out or anything? No, there was blood everywhere, Miss. Oh, apparently it's very painful. Yeah, it was. It was excruciatingly painful. And oh, I can't was, even listen without wincing. No, it was, it was a ridiculous idea. I was 20, maybe 19 or 20. Well, when I got a tattoo, I, I've got a bad, what I call my bad bird. You've seen it. It's a, it's a, it's a blue bird, which I thought was a blue bird, but since it's on my shoulder, I couldn't see the progress. So as it turns out, it's a blue bird with a large belly. So it looks like a whale with wings, right? <laughs> there might be a reason for that, though, because <laughs> I, I passed out when he was doing it because I couldn't. It was, the adre it was too much adrenaline for me. It was awful. Like, I didn't mind the pain. The pain was fine, but I passed out from the adrenaline. <laughs> and I woke up with some little kids who were there also getting some work. I don't know why they were there because, you know, you have to be over a certain age to get a tattoo. Um, and they were waving chocolate in my face. They'd go, here, you can have some of this. <laughs> it, was, it's like, what? it was like, it was like a worst nightmare, waking up from getting a tattoo. and seeing children waving chocolate in your face and going, what, where am I? What has happened to me? 
It's like it's it sounds like a scene from a late sixties, early seventies movie where they would be tripping and the shot would be going in and out and you'd be getting tattooed and then oh and the next thing you wake up and there's chocolate kids with chocolate going, Ooh. Just like, oh, freaking out. I have, oh man, I shouldn't have had that mushroom omelet. <laughs> so true. Um so at, at you enjoyed kindergarten was that at at like high school, mm. did you do well? Um, I really enjoyed it. I was, I, I think, I don't know. I, I can't, I don't have bad memories of high school. So I, I think I, I loved learning and that was, that was the big thing. And I had some great teachers. I think we've spoken of them before on, on here. And, um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to learn all about the world. And cause like I said, I was in a very remote area, a long way away from a big city and, mm no internet, it's just the idea of being able to learn was like heaven, you know. Everything was an opportunity to learn. So I think I was probably a nerd maybe, but I was also really naughty, Alan. I got, I did, a, I was very secretive naughty, I think. Like what sort of things? My parents were teachers at a small country school. So you have to, you have to be quite, um, not bad things, but just, you know, I just made sure I, I had a full teenage lifestyle. Um, whilst also being under the microscope on the daily basis with my parents at school. <laughs> oh, now, I need to ask you a question vis-a-vis -vis having a full teenage lifestyle. Mm. Did you ever turn a rock melon into a bong? No, but I was around people who did, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> Is that the same as saying I didn't inhale? <laughs> I love that. I haven't personally done it, but oh. I could tell you how to do it. <laughs> I watched people do it. Yeah, yeah. I just love those people who go through that period in their life. And I, I imagine a lot of people have known this person. They're really smart. They can visualise things really well. But there's just that period in their lives where that intelligence and that spatial, that ability to visualise things in space is only focused on how you can turn everything into a bottle. <laughs> well, exactly. How would we know that Spring Valley bottles are the best for that sort of situation? How else would we know that information? Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Exactly. You know, they. you say, oh, I just bought this nice wool. Oh, I could turn that ball of wool into a bomb. How? And the next thing they, you know... Oh, a watering can. Oh, <laughs> man, that'll be an amazing one. Big bowl. Um, did you, were you as a kid, were you a good, a good uh, teenager? What were you like? No, no, I was not a good teenager. Yeah. I was um, very rebellious, but not in an interesting way, in just a really negative, smart-ass way. Oh. Um, in... Six and seven form, year 11 and 12, I was not allowed to go into most of my classes. I had to do my work in the principal's office. There was actually a desk there for me. Um, in the principal's office? Yeah, there was. His name was, his name was Brother Peter. He was an amazing guy. He was... A lot of pr principals just would have put me in the incinerator. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure they did put a few kids in the incinerator over the years. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, well, this boarding school was pretty accountable back in those days. Yeah, I, pro I think they probably just put their hand into the incinerator, for instance. Yeah. And let that be a lesson to you. Well, of course it is, because I'll never use my hand again. Um, so, um, yeah, so I was, I, I was not um, what you would call uh, studious. A model student. Oh, no, no, I was... Well, look, put it this way. The only sort of model student I was is if you'd taken a model student, like a model of a student made out of plastic, and then attacked it with a blowtorch <laughs> or put it in the incinerator and then pulled it out, and it was all just mangled and dripping. That's the model student that I was. <laughs> oh, were you a little bit goth? Were you a little bit sort of... Or were you more punk? Oh, punk. I was in a band. Well, we've talked about this on the show. I was in a band called Abortion on Demand. Right. And, yeah, so I was just, I was a typical middle-class white punk. Um, <laughs> yeah, who was just, who, who identified with people very different to me. But, you know, ripped T-shirts, safety pins, did a bit of self-piercing, 
yeah. um, shaved heads, Doc Martens, um, things like that. So I'd love to see. I'd love to see a photo of you in that era. Oh look, I, think I have. Do you have, have any? Oh, no, there's, there's not a lot of school photos. I would have shown you a photo I was in a play when I was about 19 where I had a blonde Ooh. mohawk. Oh, and yes. A lot of that stuff going on and dangly earrings and things like that. Oh. That was not too far away from the sort of person I was at the time. Yeah. So, no, no, school was, school was not a great time. But, not a great um, time. I mean, I'd like to go to school now. Like, I reckon it's got... Me too. What would you study? Hmm? What would you study? What would I study if I went back to school now? Mm. Um, I don't know, maybe growing things in the incubator. <laughs> How to fashion bombs in ceramics. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, yes. How to turn, like, I mean, surely that's in some sort of online tutorial you could do. Absolutely. Call it bong bongathon. And people just send in pictures of a thing and then yeah. you show them detailed plans of how to turn that thing into a bong. So you'd be like sort of a bong architecture. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what's it called? What's the, um, Kevin, what's his name? Yeah, Grand Designs. Bong Designs. Bong Designs. That's bong Designs. <laughs> that's what it'd be called. And I, love that. and, and I, I build one, but I also interview famous bong makers. Yes. And that I go and they show me their most elaborate bongs. And yeah, and you can, and you can talk about their bong journey and, like, you know, the bit in the middle where they run out of money yeah. and the bit in the bit and when it all goes over time and the bit in the middle where someone doesn't turn up or everyone doesn't turn up to help. Yeah, yeah that's and it. And that somehow yeah. miraculously appears. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the main part is I get challenged to make a bong out of a thing, like yeah. someone's grandmother. They say, can you make a bong out of my grandma? And I go, well, I'm not sure, but let's go and talk to a surgeon about how we might go about this. Oh, I mean... I, I would watch that. Bong yes. Designs, hosted by Ellen Bro. <laughs> <laughs> can we, can I reckon... We I think SBS maybe would go for it. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon. Yeah. Maybe Isolation TV. Yeah, they might do it. They, they might be happy with that. Yeah, just people send in things like sheep skulls or um, oh. a, 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 some old Tupperware or a pot plant. Oh, um, you know, something like that. Or, I like it. Yeah, or a motorcycle. <laughs> Can you turn my motorcycle into a bomb? How would you work out with that through the body of the? Oh, I reckon you. What you'd do is you'd you'd make sure the petrol tank didn't have anything in it, and that's where you'd affix the whatever the cone is, and then you'd sort of just hollow out everything and then suck on the exhaust pipe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that just appears to me to be what you would do. Appears, yeah, of course. Yeah. And it appears to me that that would work too. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, uh, look, I'm going to go away, Miff, and start yeah. working on the proposal for uh, bong designs. Great. That's great. Well, well, let's meet up again next week. We'll see how you go. Yeah, so look. That we'll work on and giving it, judging it. Yeah, and look, if I miss next week, it'll be because I've turned a motorcycle into a bomb. <laughs> What's that book? Um, Zen oh, and the Artist uh, Motorcycle yeah. Maintenance. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's, this is your time, Alan. <laughs> go I'll, be so, I'll be so zen, I just don't turn up for anything. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Right, lovely to catch up again. See you, babe. See you. Bye. Bye.